Hi, you're watching the Nerky Worky and this is Indie Game News. Yeah, we're going to be looking at some games that are coming out this month and some games that have come out last month. Without further ado, let's dive right into the games. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to lie, this game caught my attention because of the giants and the fancy, fancy kind of style that comes with it. That's the reason why I picked this game. Like, that's what caught my attention, that's what got me so excited. It kind of gives me a Diablo sort of vibe, except not as dark, not as gothic, it's just very bright. And a bit more Nordic, I think, as well. But either way, the gameplay looks very smooth, it looks very fun. I just like that sort of style of game, like, especially that... The, the, it looks the same way that Diablo's done. Like, that sort of third-person, overhead view sort of, sort of look. It just, it goes so well with games like this. You, re you can really be tactical with it. So that's why I really enjoy this. And it's not only that, but this game is sort of fantastical in a way. That's even a word. Ah yes, ah yes, it does say here. Then was a single player comic book action adventure set in wild uh, uh action adventure set in the final winter before Ragnarok, the Fimble Winter. So yeah, it is very Nordic, that is why. He plays an El Berserk travelling to Jodenheim. Yo Jodenheim, that's it. To fulfill his destiny, battling trolls and Jodens to reclaim an ancient artifact that might just set battling trolls and Jodens to reclaim an ancient artifact that might just might save Midgard. So yeah, that's all we need to know about that game. Let's move on to the next one. I couldn't be more staged, I really couldn't have. Now this game kind of looks like a typical indie puzzle horror, you know, it kind of gives that sort of vibe when you watch it, but there's a, definitely a strong religious <laughs> implication in this game. And I think like it's because the plot of this game is centered around a very devoted uh, religious family. And that's kind of what makes this very religious, very, very religious. And that's also what makes it even more interesting, because I, I love religious horrors. It kind of, it's, I don't know, like, it's just, it is the basis of most horror, is religion. I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just that a lot of horror does come from, the span from religion. And that's why it always, it always interests me. It fascinates me, it fascinates me. It's just, it's just, it's just interesting. I just get the feeling that in this game, someone's devotion is going to be questioned. One of the family members' devotion to the religion is going to be questioned, and that's what's causing all the paranormal activity around the house, potentially. I just feel like that that's going to be the basis for the plot, and a lot of what the goings on in the game. And that's what I think is going to be driving it. So, that also is very interesting. It's just, it just looks like a typical horror, and that's, also why I like it, because indie horrors are always the most interesting horrors, but it does look, it does look good. Earthshade looks like what Fallout would be if it had nothing to do with Fallout. It just looks so peaceful and tranquil and colourful, which is not what Fallout is, but it's in the same sort of style as Fallout. So you, you, you're basically a painter just travelling the island of Earthshade, just helping people out, painting stuff, visiting different cities and different remarkable and spectacular looking places. And it's, it's such a it's such a peaceful game, like it, it just it definitely just oozes that that peaceful. There's people with that bit 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 boo bit boo. It definitely just oozes that peaceful vibe. It really does. It's quite spectacular like that. It definitely is the type of game to play if you've had enough of the dark, gruesome, and violent games. For sure, like a lot of the stuff that comes out recently, like it's it's just different. I think that's why I picked it as well. It's just very different to what I have seen. Um, at the moment. It's just so peaceful, so tranquil. We needed a platform in there. We, we needed a platformer in there. I needed to put a platformer in there. I can't do one of these and not have a platformer. I just... I, I, you, you know how much I like platformers. Maybe you don't. You probably don't. I do. So... Screw you. Yeah. It has martial arts. It has monkeys. It has action. What else, what, what else more can I say? Like, that says it all about this game, doesn't it? This is a game that came out last month, but I just can't ignore how smooth this game is. I just can't. It just looks so... It's, it's so fun. It's just a lot of fun. Like, I haven't played it myself yet, I just watched a fair bit of gameplay on it, but I will be playing it. It just looks a lot of fun, it just looks so smooth, like most platformers should be. There's a lot of different environments in this game, and that makes it a lot more interesting. You can travel in snow, you can travel in rocky areas, in desert sort of areas, like, it just... That allows for a lot of a lot of variety, I think, especially in a platformer and what you can do uh, in those areas and the different types of gameplay. So it kind of keeps you on your toes. I think that's important. 
and good. I don't know why I say important a lot, but yeah, it is important. I think what also piques my interest, peak, peaks, peaks my interest. Uh, do you know what else piques my interest? It's the characters. The characters, they look absolutely stunning. It, the way they're displayed is just spectacular. I don't know why I'm going over the top with this. <laughs> Everything about the game just makes it look spectacular. Like, even the characters and the, the, the different sprites that you meet during the campaign as well, like, so imaginative. It's just there's so much imagination being put into the, the display of the characters, and I can really appreciate that because I love it when characters just look really wacky and weird. Like I think that's it's, it's so good. It's so much fun when they when they look so strange. It's just it gives so much character to the game. It really does. So yeah, Magic Design Studios, you done done a good, done done a a goody good two shoes thing. Yeah, I love the way the trailer opens, it's like, shall we just build a spaceship and go to Mars? That's an excellent idea. It's just, it's so good, like, <laughs> this sounds like an everyday conversation they all have. Now, I know this game came out last year, it came out last April, I think, but it's only just coming to the Switch this month, and I'm using that as an excuse to put it on the show, so deal with it. Just deal with it. Now, even though in the trailer it kind of sets out exactly what they're going to do, straight from the offset, it doesn't, it doesn't really give the in indication that this is going to be a puzzle game. And it is a puzzle game. This is a very heavily orientated puzzle game. So if you do love puzzles, really creative and complicated and long ones that stress you the f out, yeah, it's trying to sweat. <laughs> really complicated and long puzzles that stress you out and make you feel like you're worthless and have nothing to live for, and that you're really stupid and your IQ is probably about two, then do it. Alright, let's have a look at some honourable mentions for the month that I didn't talk about completely but really did like the look of in some ways. So yeah, that's a bit of a mouthful. We'll, we'll, we'll name this segment properly at another time, not right now. So yeah, check, take, take, take a look at them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. Not this game. These games, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Indie Game News. We'll be back next week with an indie game review. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.